In this video, we're going to focus on solving a problem that relates simple harmonic motion with energy. So we have a force of 300 newtons, and it's used to stretch a horizontal spring with a 0.5 kilogram block attached to it by 0.25 meters. The block is released from rest and undergoes simple harmonic motion. So your task is to calculate the spring constant, the amplitude, the maximum acceleration, the mechanical energy of the system, the maximum velocity, and the velocity when x is 0.15. So first, let's understand what's happening in this problem. So we have a spring with a 0.5 kilogram mass. And let's say it's at its natural length. So at this position, the displacement is zero. Now we're going to apply a force to stretch the spring. And let's say it's over here now. So at this position, it's at 0.25 meters. And to hold it at that position requires a force of 300 newtons. Now once we let go of the spring, that force will no longer be there. So the restoring force will cause the system to accelerate towards equilibrium. And then it's going to go backwards and forwards and it's going to oscillate back and forth. So that's what's happening in this system. So knowing that, how can we calculate the value of the spring constant? The spring constant K is equal to the force applied divided by the change in life. So it's F over X. And it comes from Hooke's law, where F is equal to KX. So all we got to do is take the force of 300 newtons and divide it by the displacement, which was 0.25 meters. And so K is 1,200 newtons per meter. So I'm just going to write that up here. We're going to use that later. So now let's move on to part B. What is the amplitude of this mass spring system? The amplitude, you need to know, is the maximum displacement. Basically, it's the maximum value of x. Now, we stretch the spring by 0.25 meters. So the spring is going to oscillate between negative 0.25 and 0.25. It doesn't have enough energy to go beyond that. So x can vary between negative a and a. So x could be anywhere between negative 0.25 and 0.25. However, a is a fixed value. a is the maximum x value. So the amplitude is 0.25 meters because x cannot be greater than that value. So that's it. The amplitude is just the maximum displacement. So in this example, A is 0.25 meters. That's the answer to part B. Now let's move on to part C. Calculate the maximum acceleration. Now there's a simple formula that can help us get the answer. The maximum acceleration is going to be the spring constant times the amplitude divided by the mass. So we have a spring constant of 1,200 newtons per meter. And if we multiply it by 0.25 meters and then divide it by the mass, which is 0.5 kilograms. So in this example, the maximum acceleration is 600 meters per second squared. Now, Newton's second law states that the net force is mass times acceleration. So you can also find the maximum acceleration by taking the force applied and dividing by the mass of the system. So the force applied was 300 Newtons, and the mass is 0.5 kilograms. So 300 divided by 0.5 
will also give you an acceleration of 600 meters per second squared. So if you have the force and mass, you can find the acceleration, or if you have the spring constant, the amplitude, and the mass, you can also find it as well. Now let's move on to part D. Calculate the mechanical energy of the system. The mechanical energy is the total energy of the system. It's the sum of the kinetic and the potential energy of the system. But to find it, here's the formula you need. It's 1 half multiplied by the spring constant times the square of the amplitude. So the spring constant is 1200. The amplitude is 0.25. So it's 0.5 times 1200 times 0.25 squared. And so the mechanical energy of the system is 37.5 joules. Part E, what is the maximum velocity? Now before we get the answer, we need to talk about a few things. So let's say the spring is like fully stretched at this point. So let's say this is its equilibrium position, and here it's at 0.25. And when it's fully compressed, x is negative 0.25. You need to know that the maximum velocity occurs when the block is at the center, basically at a position of 0. So that's where we have the maximum velocity. On the right side, the velocity is 0. On the left side, it's 0. Now, at the center, the acceleration is 0. But at the edges, the acceleration is at its maximum value. Now, the mechanical energy of the system is constant. However, the kinetic and potential energies vary. At the center, because the block is moving at its greatest speed, the kinetic energy is at its maximum, which means that all of the kinetic energy is equal to the total mechanical energy, which is 37.5. Now, at the edge, when it's fully stretched or fully compressed, the potential energy is at a maximum. So at those positions, the potential energy is equal to the mechanical energy. But in the middle, the kinetic energy is equal to the mechanical energy. But anywhere between, let's say, let's call this point A, B, C, D, and E. So at points B and D, or anywhere else other than A, C, and E, the mechanical energy is the sum of the kinetic and the potential energy. But at point C, the mechanical energy is equal to the maximum kinetic energy. And at point A and E, the mechanical energy is equal to the maximum potential energy. So make sure you understand that. So I'm just going to put that down in writing. You may want to write this down. It's important for your test. So at A, you could set mechanical energy equal to potential energy. And at E, you could do the same thing. At point C, you could set mechanical energy equal to the kinetic energy. Everywhere else, let's say at point B and D, the mechanical energy is going to be the sum of the kinetic and the potential energy. So let's start with this formula. Mechanical energy is equal to kinetic plus the potential energy. Now at part E, the maximum velocity occurs when the block is at its equilibrium position. That is when x is equal to 0. Now we know that mechanical energy is 1 half k times the amplitude squared, and the kinetic energy is 1 half times mv squared. The potential energy of a spring is 1 half kx squared. And at the center, when x is 0, the potential energy is going to be 0. So this term disappears. So that's why we could say that at the center, mechanical energy is equal to the maximum kinetic energy. And that can help us to calculate the maximum velocity. So we could cancel the 1 half. And so k is 1,200. The amplitude is 0.25. And the mass is 0.5.
So 1,200 times 0.25 squared divided by 0.5 is 150. And then take the square root of that answer, and this will give you a maximum velocity of 12.25 meters per second. Now for those of you who want a simple equation to calculate the maximum velocity, here it is. The maximum velocity is simply the square root of k divided by m times the amplitude. So if we type in the square root of 1200 divided by the mass of 0.5 multiplied by an amplitude of 0.25, that will give you the same answer. 1200 divided by 0.5 is 2400. And the square root of 2400 times 0.25, that's going to give you this answer again, 12.25 meters per second. Now what about part f? What is the velocity when x is 0.15? So how can we find the answer? The equation that we could use is this equation. So if you want to find a velocity at any position, it's equal to the maximum velocity multiplied by 1 minus x squared over a squared. So the maximum velocity is 12.25. And the current displacement is 0.15 meters, divided by the maximum displacement of 0.25 meters. And don't forget to square it. So 1 minus 0.15 squared divided by 0.25 squared is 0.64. If you take the square root of that, that gives you 0.8. And then multiply that by 12.25. So the velocity at a position of 0.15 meters is 9.8 meters per second. Now the other way to get the answer is conservation of energy. So at this position, this would correlate to point D, which is between points C and E. So if it's not at the center or at the edge, if it's anywhere in between, you can set mechanical energy equal to kinetic plus potential energy. So the mechanical energy is 1 half Ka squared. The kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared. And the elastic potential energy is 1 half Kx squared. So let's plug in what we have. K is 1,200. The amplitude is 0.25. And then that's going to be 1 half times the mass of 0.5. And we're looking for V plus 1 half times K, which is 1,200, times X, which is 0.15. Now, we already know what this is. Half of 1,200 is 600. And 600 times 0.25 squared, that's 37.5, which is the mechanical energy that we had before. Half of 1 half is 0.25. And then half of 1,200, which is 600 times 0.15 squared, that's going to be 13.5. So at this point, we just got to solve for V. So first, let's subtract 37.5 by this number, 13.5. And so that's going to be 24. So we have 24 is equal to 0 0.25 times v squared. Next, divide 24 by 0 0.25. That will give you 96. And so 96 is equal to v squared. And now we just got to take the square root of both sides. So the square root of 96 is 9.8. And so that will give us uh, that speed again. So we get the same answer. So as you can see, you could use conservation of energy to calculate the maximum velocity or the velocity at any position. Or you could use that other equation um, to get that answer, which was this one. So there's more than one way to solve these kinds of problems.